The best way to learn is by doing. Sometimes I think that people don't get into something because they think they don't have enough tools. Just use what you got. You'd be amazed with what you could learn by just jumping in with what you have. What's going on everybody? People ask us all the time about polishing gemstones. Like what kind of gems can you polish? How do you polish gemstones? Well, I got a bunch of gemstones to my left. I've never done this before, but I'm gonna dive right in. There are different ways you can polish a gemstone. You could facet a gemstone or you could cab a gemstone. There are specific machines for doing this. In an ideal situation, you want a cabbing machine, which is this big machine with multiple diamond grit wheels that you kind of just hold the stone under and roll. And a faceting machine, of course, requires a lot more precision. We don't have any of that, but I do have a really strong rotary tool. We're also gonna use some diamond dusted bits. When you're polishing a gemstone, you're taking advantage of that gemstone's hardness, which is its ability to resist surface abrasion or scratches. Diamond is going to scratch anything, so we're not going to have any issues getting material off with these bits. But it gets a little more difficult after that. I've kind of devised a way to polish a gemstone down with sandpaper and I'm going to be using these different grits of sandpaper to get a really nice finish on the gemstone and when we're done with that I'm going to finish it off with some polishing compound. First thing we're going to do is we're going to pick our bit. This one seems to be what I want. It's got a nice large base and it kind of comes up to a tip so we can get into some small crevices. Put that in the tip of our tool and with a special tool we lock it in to make sure it doesn't fly out. So the first stone we're going to play with today is Iolite. Iolite sits at a seven to seven and a half on the Mohs scale of hardness. Definitely won't be an issue for the diamond bit but we'll see how it does with the sandpaper. I'm excited to polish this stone down because it's extremely trichroic from yellow to violet to blue so it'll be cool to see if we can make that come out. What we need to do first is get rid of some of these dirty bits so we can expose the natural crystal. Whenever you're using power tools, you want to make sure that you have eye protection. When you're grinding on gemstones, you also want to make sure that you have What's this called, breathing protection? You don't want any of that dust getting into your lungs. If you do this too much, you could get silicosis. Let's not do that. All right, let's get to it. Like I said before, we're going to take out those bits of matrix rock and we're just going to wind up our tool and start grinding on the surface. You can see it's taking it off really easy. We've been grinding on this for a bit. It's starting to look really good, but we still got some matrix material there in the center. So we're gonna keep grinding at that. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to cut down the high points to meet the low points so that when we apply the sandpaper, the sandpaper can equally distribute abrasion to the whole surface at once. Whoo, it's dusty. Okay. So I believe this is sanded down just enough to where I can start the polishing process. And I've kind of devised my own way of doing that with the materials that I already have. So let me show you what I'm working with. This is a 180 grit, it's very rough. It's going to flatten it even more than it already is. And then I have this tool. I'm not exactly sure what it does, but it's really good at holding a piece of sandpaper. So if I take my gemological tweezers and I poke a hole, in the center, I place it on top of this, then we have kind of a cheap sanding disc. Now I'm gonna crease over here so I know where my edge is. If it goes off the edge, it's going to just launch my finger. It's okay though. If I ever jump, it's not because it hurt, it's because it scared me. There's one thing different that we have to do with this, and that is we have to squirt it with water every now and then. This process creates a lot of heat, and you do not want a lot of heat on your gemstone or it could possibly cleave. And to some gemstones with a low stability, it can cause them to craze. So every now and then, it's gonna get the super soak. You can see the further up in grit we go, the more lustrous the gem becomes. We haven't even touched polishing compound yet. This is just from the luster that Eyelight has. And we're gonna get even shinier than this. What's up next? 2000, and this is the last grit before we move to our polishing compound.
That is what the 2000 grit sandpaper gets us. Polishing jewelry or polishing gemstones with a rotary tool usually consists of a little wool buffing pad. And you kind of just take this screw and you screw it in the center. We're just gonna take that all the way down until it stops, just like that. Next, we take our polishing compound. Now, you don't need a whole lot of this. We just kind of get our tool started and get it white like that. Yeah, all right. So this is my polishing attempt. For an amateur, first time, I don't think I did too bad. Uh, we still got a little bit of polishing compound that got into some of the fractures in the stone. You can see right here, this wasn't seen before. There's kind of like a, a half circular fracture right here that we uncovered. It's looking really oceanic in there to get our light. We can kind of see up in there now, but this is only stone one. Up next we have rainbow obsidian. This should be a little quicker because obsidian is only a five on the most scale of hardness since it is natural glass. It is lava that is cooled too quickly to form a crystalline structure. Okay, so that was a lot quicker than the Iolite, but you can kind of see what I'm doing here. I want to preserve this already polished area, but what you may not be seeing is right here, if we add a little water, we can see those bands moving through the stone and kind of following where this edge was right here. So this curve is going to curve up in here and we're going to have a nice interesting wave. It's a little rough on this side. Let's change that. That's it for the sanding of the obsidian. This piece is a little difficult. I'm a little limited by my tools. I could definitely see why a cabbing machine is a necessity for someone. It's extremely difficult to get in this divot right here. I'm kind of only working with the edge of the tool instead of the flat, which is ideal. The more sandpaper you can get on there, the better. So we'll hit it with the polishing compound. We'll see what we got. Now, as I add this polishing compound with this felt tip, the stone gets extremely hot. There is a ton of friction going on. I can feel it where my thumb is, even though I'm polishing on the other side of the stone. It's kind of like buffing a car. Let's do circles, wax on, wax off. All right, and that's that. It's shinier, I can say that. <laughs> it's not perfect, and this is where I say I would like to have a cabbing machine. Can we put that in the budget? No, with the tools that I had, I'm, I'm very happy with this. It's very satisfyingly smooth right here. I don't know if you can tell, look at that. It feels very smooth, almost slippery. When I rub my fingernail on the top of it, I don't feel anything catching. Over here's a little different. I see a couple little lines going horizontally there. I think that's from the disc catching on the, the edge. For my first obsidian polish, I'm happy. We're gonna do another stone. It's a little more experimental than it already is because this stone is very rough. This is Mexican fire opal. We can see this matrix. This looks like it came from a desert, but if you turn it enough, you will see there's a little something right there. So I think what I wanna do is I wanna take the diamond bit to this area right here and see if I can uncover any more of this vitreous luster.
So I have to be really careful with the actual gem quality opal here. As I have noticed as soon as my sandpaper goes over it, it just kind of melts into dust. Okay, so we are done sanding this Matrix Opal. It's really interesting to see a rock that looks like it can be found on a trail, shiny. <laughs> so we got one more step, and it's always interesting to see how this step makes the stone look, the polish. And there we have it, one polished piece of Mexican fire opal in Matrix. So what did we learn today? Um, we learned a lot. We learned that I need a calving machine. No, <laughs> if I had to repeat this experiment here, I would probably pick stones that were a little bit smaller. If you've ever seen a lap that goes on a gem fastening machine, it will look like this, but a lot bigger. That really helps if you want to flatten an entire face rather than doing it in sections like I had to do. But all in all, I had a great time. The best way to learn is by doing. Sometimes I think that people don't get into something because they think they don't have enough tools. Just use what you got. You'd be amazed with what you could learn by just jumping in with what you have. On this channel, we always take a closer look. And for my closer look, I want to pick this Mexican fire opal. If you have any tips for me for the next time I polish a gemstone, put them down in the comments. And while you're there, like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Thanks for watching.